Well, good morning, friends out on uh, Facebook and uh, Sunday school class here, Sunday morning, the 19th, the the uh, Sunday before Thanksgiving. We're going to have Thanksgiving this coming Thursday, and we're looking forward to it. and going to have a great feast here and a uh, wonderful dinner with uh, all the trimmings and fellowship, and we have a lot to be thankful for, don't we? Amen. So tell all your friends... Uh, you that are in Sunday school this morning, and of course you out there on Facebook, if if maybe you're not, a lot of people have family gatherings and such the like, but if you don't and you want to have nice fellowship, or maybe your family thing is in the afternoon and you want to come in the morning, come th uh, Thanksgiving morning, uh, we'll start service at 10 o'clock, and we'll be wrapping up by noon. If you do something in the afternoon, you'd like to come, you're welcome to come. 501 Ridgewood Avenue, Holly Hill, Florida for special uh, Thanksgiving dinner with all the trimmings, and you're certainly welcome uh, if you'd like to come share with us on that day. Now, Proverbs 19, we do the Proverbs. What what page is that on, church, uh, in our Pew Bible? 723. 723? 723 in the Pew Bibles, church. And um, in Sunday school, a little bit different than our preaching in, in our church services. We interact. If you have questions or comments, you're welcome to uh, to participate. Let's pray. Lord, help us now in Proverbs 19 to get the truth. The Bible says, "Ye shall know the truth. Truth shall uh, set you free, make you free." Amen. And uh, so, help us now in Proverbs uh, 19th chapter, that book of wisdom. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Better is the poor. So, you know, here's Solomon that says, it's better to be poor. You say, I don't want to be poor. I want to be rich. I'm just reading what the Bible says here now. Proverbs 19, verse 1. It says, better is the poor that walketh in his integrity. Oh, what does that mean? What do you think that means, church? Better is the poor that walketh in his integrity. Huh? Truth, honesty, integrity means you mean what you say, you don't lie. Uh, you give an honest day's work for an honest day's pay. And uh, it says uh, you might be poor, but but you you know you you have integrity. You have a, another word for integrity would be character. Amen. You would have a good character, not a, you wouldn't be a bad character. You'd be a good character. Better is the poor that walketh in his integrity than he that is perverse in his lips and is a fool. Watch out. I won't have integrity. I won't be a fool. Amen. Amen. Verse 2. If you have comments or questions, just pipe in here in Sunday school hour. Also that the soul... Also that the soul be without knowledge it is not good see you you you, you want to have knowledge a godly knowledge not worldly wisdom the bible says the wisdom of the world is foolishness with god and the wisdom of god is foolishness to the world so there's worldly wisdom and there's godly wisdom godly wisdom is what found in these proverbs like we're reading today it's the 19th day of the month and we're looking at the 19th proverb it's not good and he that hasteth with his feet Sinneth. I think let, let's. I think this means uh, if you run to something too quickly, don't move too quickly on something. Amen. Did 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 you ever do that? Did you did did you make a move on something, and uh, it was a mistake? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I have too. I've made a mistake. Sometimes I've made a mistake, and 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 I I've seen something I thought I really needed and 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 wanted and. And I bought it too quickly, and once I looked it over and everything, I I found out I'd made a mistake. Did you ever do that? Yeah. yeah. Did Did you ever go to a Did you ever go to a a place uh, uh, that you just quickly made a decision on, and once you got there, you wish you weren't there? Yeah. Well, sure. And uh, did you Did you make a decision too quickly? Uh, you had some kind of agreement on one thing or another, uh, and you didn't read the fine print. <laughs> <laughs> and if, and if you took time to read the fine print, you wouldn't have done it. Amen. So it says, uh, uh, 
hasted with his feet. That means don't don't move too quick. I mean, don't, I mean, you have to move. You, now, there's some people making every decision. They'll never make a decision on anything. I ain't talking about that. You, you know what I mean? So there has to be a balance on that. But it's not too good to move too quickly on something. And because um, not everything uh, doesn't look. Yes, ma'am. Oh my, yes, pray on it. And wait patiently. Yeah. The answer will come from yes. God to you. But yes. you have moved too quickly and have made mistakes. But it was a lesson learned in that. You have to slow down and take your time. Pray I, about everything. I think you've told that perfectly, sister. And it, that's so good, yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, pray upon it and, and move at God's direction. And when you've got... When, when you can have peace with God about it, go ahead with it. Amen? I think that's very good. That's such a good addition to this verse, sister. Verse 3, The foolishness of man perverteth his way, and his heart fretteth against the Lord. You see, a fool, a fool's against God. Amen. You, you, you got to be, you got to be careful. I got, some people... There's some people I just won't deal with them anymore. Anymore, you know why? They're a flat out fool. I mean, I say, oh, I, um, you say, well, you should have time for everybody, not for a fool. I talk to some stupid fool that won't listen, right. and 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 trying to, I mean, they're just a fool. And you say, well, I don't. You see, you got to have discernment and wisdom, uh, uh, letting any. If I had an auditorium here full of fools that were coming here, Dave, we're talking all kinds of stupidness, we'd have chaos in here. Oh, yeah. Huh? Amen. Wouldn't we? Amen. <laughs> yeah. Fool. Verse 4. Proverbs 19, 4. Wealth maketh many friends. Oh, boy. Remember, uh, uh, Gregory, remember when we seen Cowboy the other day here? And uh, Brad, remember we seen Cowboy? Uh, the other day, and and, and and you know what? Bless his heart. He even, uh, uh, he even uh, gave money into, he made some money. And he had good piece of, good piece of money, I think like $1,700. And he gave, uh, he gave $100 to the church, to the mission. That was a nice thing. Yeah, that's a, that's a nice gift. He said he was giving his tithe. He didn't actually give a tithe. If he'd have gave a tithe, how much would that have been? 170 yeah. But I wasn't going to ball him out or anything. Yeah. Let's tell I got the $100 bill in my hand, amen. <laughs> 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 <Never seen that. laughs> yeah, I received that. Remember that preacher I told you about? I thought about it. Had that old preacher. He used to, I don't know if he's on TV or not. I don't watch hardly TV at all. In my list, most of them are Bible and things. But this old guy that had, uh, uh, he had uh, two Bentleys, and he had a couple airplanes. He had a million-dollar SUV, and he had a great big giant pulpit. And he got money in different ways. And he'd preach and hustle them. And one day, they were just coming and piling money on the pulpit. I mean, just piled up with money. There wasn't no change up there either. Just all piled up with money. And and he hustled them, you know. And then the, the other day, he'd go like this. He'd preach like I did. And, and uh, uh, Gary, come on up and walk here towards the pulpit. Come on up here and walk towards the pulpit. And uh, and, 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 and put put your hand out to me. And he'd re he went like this. Took the money out of the man's hand or the lady's hand. And he says, I received that. And you know what he did? He didn't stick it in the offering plate. He stuck it in his pocket. <laughs> he said, okay. He was a real hustler. You remember, you remember that I told you? Yeah. You ever see that guy on television? No, no. <laughs> he was a piece of work. He said he went to the, uh, uh, he went to the uh, RV show. And he, and he says, bring the, bring the boss over here. And bring the boss over there. And he says, uh, What's a what's a fine this was this is years back. Probably more than that now. He says, What's the finest uh 
ride you got in here, mobile home thing. And he showed it to me. He says, what does it cost? He said, a million and a half dollars. He said, I'll take it. <laughs> he says, why not have the best? Why not have an airplane? Why not have a two Bentleys? Now, if you don't know what a Bentley is, uh, that's the highest price Rolls Royce. You heard, you heard of Rolls Royce all the time. A Bentley is made by Rolls Royce, but it's more expensive than a Rolls Royce. It's the highest price uh, Rolls Royce. And but anyway, um, uh, I'll receive that. Yeah. So he was a uh, uh, he was a wealth maketh many friends. You got money. I've got a rich friend. And I don't have a lot of rich friends, but I, I do have a rich friend. And uh, through knowing him and knowing the influence money has, uh, money controls politicians. I don't know if you know that or not, but I mean, politicians are completely controlled by money. And uh, <clears throat> many times a rich man will go in a church and run a church, too. Yeah. He'd just have a hired preacher, actually what it is. And uh, if, if, the, if the rich man smokes, do you think he's going to preach against smoking? I don't think so. <laughs> if the rich man's got a girlfriend on the side and cheating on his husband, uh, cheating on his wife, you think the preacher going to preach on that? No. No. Because wealth maketh many friends. I'm not for sale. I don't know about you. I'm not for sale. I fear God. I'm going to serve Him and tell the truth. I'm not going to sit back and count the consequences. Whether it'll, it'll it'll help me or my ministry, I I could I could cater to money not for myself personally, but just for the ministry's sake. Actually, you don't have to when you got God. You're right, sister. God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. I I, I remember when I got property. In Milwaukee, we got a whole block of property and uh, bought it from the city. And it was worth, um, I mean, a whole block of property, uh, 203,000 square feet, 1,250 seat auditorium, two gymnasiums, a whole block of property. It used to be a middle school. I remember when, uh, when we closed the deal and I went and and talk to the city attorney when we were signing the papers to close the deal. Uh, he said, Pastor, there ain't no way you can get this. Pro we bought it for $141,000. It was worth probably at that time. When we bought that. When I left Milwaukee in 1992, that property was uh, probably worth $12 million. And, and it was paid for. We won't pay down forty one thousand dollars for it. But when I bought it, it's probably worth six, seven million. Bought it for hundred forty one thousand yeah. dollars and 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 uh, the attorney, the city attorney, he was a a junior one, wasn't the top city attorney, but the junior one that did dealt in real estate. He says there ain't no way that that you can get this property. That it's impossible for you to get the property. I just laughed at him. <laughs> I said, I said, just sign the papers. Had the, the mayor hadn't signed the paper yet. Mayor had to sign the paper. I said, just get the mayor to sign the paper. He said, well, there's just one thing you need to sign off on here yet. And uh, I said, well, what's what's that? He says, there's been uh, six thousand dollars worth of sewer work done out along the side of out here been six thousand dollars worth of sewer work around the block here done and uh you're gonna have to pay for that we'll take it out of 
will add on the thing. I says, no. Well, if, if, if you won't pay the sewer work, he said, you're going to kill the deal. The, 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 the mayor won't sign the deal. Try to little some foolishness there trying to pull you, you know. Get you for another six, seven grand. Yeah, right. And I said, well, look, you're a lawyer. Yeah. I says, if you had the work done, and the work's already done, it don't have to be done. And it's your property right now. And I, when you sign this and I sign it and we got a deal and I give you a check for $141,000 and it's my property. I'm not a lawyer. You are, I says. That's your $7,000 bill, not mine. He says, well, let me explain this. You ain't got nothing to explain to me. I said, I'm a simple man. That's simple math. And, and, and that's it. And so... I had the president of my board there with me. Sometimes it, it's good not to take the president of your board with you. Best to go by yourself, sign your papers. And uh, he says, well, and he was a rich man. And he said, my lawyer's right across the street. That big uh, Marshall Nilsley Tower was right across the street. And he had a big shot lawyer firm over there. And, he said, let me, uh, uh, let me call my lawyer. And uh, he called, and here comes this hot shot lawyer over. Right away, come right over there. And he's, oh, thank you, you know, this guy. Is, he's thanking so much for God. I didn't even know what I needed a stupid lawyer for. <laughs> What's he going to tell me that I don't know? And so this stupid lawyer, <laughs> he says, well, you know, he says, you're really getting this property for a really, this property is worth millions of dollars. You're only paying 140. So what's another 7,000? I says, it ain't mine to pay. I says, this is God's money. And they had the sewers work put in. They're going to pay. I ain't going to pay. We ain't going to pay. Michigan ain't going to pay. He said, I'll tell you what. He said, like he was a big shot, you know, he says, I think I can probably talk him into paying half. That's what this lawyer tells me. How about that? There's no. And then, of course, my board member, he says, well, pastor, this guy's lost. I don't care if he's a lawyer or not. And uh, and so he just threw his hands up, and I told the city lawyer, he come back in. I says, yeah, uh, we've discussed it. I didn't tell him the guy told me, you know, what he told me to, uh, I just says, uh, we ain't, I didn't tell him what our conversation was. I says, we ain't paying. He said, well, he's probably going to turn it down. I says, well, take it in there and have him see if he'll sign it. <laughs> he comes back. These guys are, I hate lying, crooked lawyers. I mean, I can't stand crooked lawyers. He come back. It's a miracle. He signed it. Well, what else could he do but sign it? I mean, it <laughs> Legally, I mean, did did you did you ever did did you ever did you ever sell one? If you ever been in dealing with homes, I mean, anything that was done on the property before you bought it, that was at their expense, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Now, if they wanted to get the money for you, they'd have to negotiate it in the price of the property. But they can't come after a deal is dying. They can't come in at closing. They come in at closing and clip you for seven grand. Yeah, right. And so. It, Anyway, but then get this. I love to tell stories. I, I get this. Then I get a, I get a fancy letterhead with gold letters on it and everything from this highfalutin attorney firm where this guy worked, and they sent me a bill for five hundred and fifty dollars. All this crummy lawyer that gave me bad advice did was walk across the street, stayed there for 15 minutes, walked back, going to charge me $550. I called my, my the president of my board. I says, Harris, the guy sent me a bill. He says, oh, you should see, you should see the money I have to pay these lawyers. I said, well, <laughs> the mission ain't going to pay it. I says, you were there. He did nothing. Well... 
I'll see what I can do. Maybe I can get it down. I says, no, I'm going to call him up and talk to his boss over there, which I did. And they, they act like it's a big deal. Well, we'll write it off. Write it off, you dirty crooks. You should have never tried to clip me for it, you know? That's the way it is. Wealth maketh many friends. The golden rule is, listen, the golden rule is what? Tell Someone tell me the golden rule, rule, church. What's the golden rule in the Bible? Come on now. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I know you, what you, you knew what that was, but you're afraid to say something in church because you're afraid you might be. It's so simple, you think you might be wrong and you don't want to get laughed at. No, it's what you thought. Do unto others as you have done to you. But that's the golden rule of God in the church. What's the golden rule in the, in the, in the world? The golden rule in the church is he that has the gold rules. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah. He that has the gold rules. That's the way it is in the world. Wealth maketh many friends, but the poor is separated from his neighbor. You ain't got any money. You're poor. You're nothing. You're nobody. Where'd Charlie go? He split on. We came here and he, oh, there he is. Get up, man. Boy, just about to get all after you. You're what? Yeah, you got a you got a hoodie on. I'm sorry, you're cold. Come on in, Jose. Doors open down the end. Open up them doors, Greg. If they, are they open? I don't know. Jose, come on in. Open the door. Grab the door handle. There you got. You got to turn the handle. Come on in. Come on, Jose. Hmm. Charlie, you made this. Uh, uh, Charlie made this uh, statement to me this morning. I, I heard a guy died behind McDonald's a couple days ago, and uh, they said it was Charlie's friend. Charlie come in this morning. I says, I heard your friend. Yeah, he says Alfred, my friend. He died behind McDonald's. Not sure of the cause of death yet, but uh, uh, he said, yeah, I just had. Uh, I just had coffee with him the day before. He's a friend of mine, Alfred. How, how old was he, Charlie? 52. Died a young man. Uh, I, Charlie, I didn't say anything to you about this, but Charlie said to me, I don't know why. There was nothing in the paper about it. you know why? He was a poor man that had nothing. Who cares about him? Nobody. I said, did he have any relatives? No. He was from Tennessee. Folks don't care nothing about people who don't have nothing. Why do you think people despise the homeless? And, and uh, yeah. Wealth maketh many friends, but the poor is separated from his neighbor. They care less. Homeless person can die. Uh, now, it might get in the newspaper if he's run over by a truck or something. That might. But if he just dies behind McDonald's, some kind of natural cause, someone shot him or cut his throat, it might get in the paper. But uh, if it's just a natural death, who cares? They don't care. But you know what? God cares for the poor, amen? amen. Did you know God's no respecter of persons? Amen. You could be the poorest in the world in the, in the far-off country where millions and millions are are poor and starving today. Yes. And God cares about them. Loves them. Verse 5. A false witness shall not be unpunished. And he that speaketh lies shall not escape. You better watch it, you liars. How many liars we got in here? How many liars we got in here? Come on, you all you liars. Raise your hand. That's right. What do you think? Anybody didn't raise your hand yet? Come on, get you. Yeah, you're a liar. You didn't raise your hand. A bunch of liars in here. None that doeth good, no, not one. Everybody in here is told a lie. Amen. Well, you might come around and say, 
Well, I don't tell big lies. All lies are the same. Yeah, you might have been. Uh, 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 you 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 might have been uh, raised in the Catholic Church where they have uh, venial sins and mortal sins. I think they have different kinds of sins, don't they? Sin is sin is sin. The Bible says this, Revelation twenty one eight. All liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Revelation twenty one eight. Yeah, so don't you? We say, well, I just lie when I have to. Many, how, how many of you do this? You just lie for convenience' sake because it's easier to tell a lie than tell the truth because it'd be harder on you. Did you ever do that? We all have, of course. We do that. We we quickly spit out a lie because it's gonna be easier on us. Like when you was little, maybe when you was even older. You, you you took a cookie, and Grandma had counted the cookies. And Grandma said, "Gregory, did you take a cookie?" Gregory says, "No." <laughs> Grandma tells Gregory, "You did. I had ten cookies, only nine cookies there. You'd be the only one in this room, Gregory." <laughs> Amen. Yeah. A false witness shall not be unpunished. You lie, false witness against someone, you be punished. Amen. And he that speaketh lies shall not escape. You and I got to be careful, don't we? Yeah. This is the Proverbs teachings of God through Solomon, the son of David, who asked for wisdom and it was given to him, plus many other things. Many will entreat the favor of the prince. And every man is a friend to him that giveth gifts. It's the same, this old money thing where you can give money away. It's a big deal. I was watching a Christmas movie with my wife yesterday. And uh, that's kind of cute, these... It was a Hallmark movie. You ever watch them Hallmarks? They're kind of they're, they're 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 nice. They're nice. They have a night, and they always have a happy ending, and they get married, and all of that. And sister, did you did you ever see the one about that fellow that came to America, and he was a prince, and he took the girl back over there? Yeah, the mother. Yeah, that, that we I watched that with my mother. Yeah, yeah you remember? You seen it? <laughs> you seen all? I watched my. my you know, my, my I, I didn't used to be so nice. When I was younger, my wife, a woman always liked them kind of movies, and she liked that. I never had time for it before. But I do now that I'm older, and I watch them with And I really enjoy them. I kind of, because, I mean, they're, they're very predictable. Yeah. Yeah. They come, they fall in love, they have a little spat. It lasts for about ten minutes, and they come back, and they get married. They're happy ever. I like it. I like it. Like, yeah. That's the way they all are. I like it, you know. <laughs> so anyway... The prince, when he went back home, he's driving around in a Rolls Royce, and, and uh, he he pulls into the orphanage. Remember that where he was in the orphanage downtown? Yeah, with the with the with, with the Christmas trees. Yeah, and and uh, and what did he do? And and his uh, his girlfriend from America, she's okay with buy a Christmas tree, and and the uh, the nun, I think it was a nun. I think it was a nun that come up. Yeah, and with the, with the little girl that was there, and she eventually got adopted by one of the rich people. But anyway, uh, the 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 woman that was in charge of the orphanage there that was selling the trees, she said, "Yeah, this, that, and the other thing." And 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 uh, she said what they were what they were selling the trees for for the nurse. So what he did is uh, he bought them all and said, "Give them away." I mean, see, people people got money; they can do that. They can buy the whole block. They can buy the whole Christmas tree yard and and uh, and and sell it. And, and I mean, I mean, they can they can pay for it, and then they can resell it and get double money on it. Yeah, write it off. Right, right. Uh, that's it. I won't go into these these rich people that write stuff off. They're not, uh, you know. These uh, I'm talking about. I'm talking about the the billionaires. I'm talking about Zuckerberg. Uh, I think he's a Facebook guy, isn't he? I'm talking about uh, 
Gates, he's Microsoft and that, they say these men are so wonderful. They give away hundreds of millions of dollars. They don't give away, uh, the only thing they do is, is, is the, they create a foundation and instead of paying taxes, they give it away. That's all they do. And then they look like they're somebody. All, all they're doing, I'll, I'll bet you they take them tax incentives away, all of these multi-billion dollar foundations that they have would dry up pretty fast, you know. Yeah, they would. So anyway, uh, many will entreat the favor of the prince. Made me think of that movie I seen yesterday. And every man is a friend to him that giveth gifts. I, we ate in a restaurant yesterday, me and a couple of my guys, and uh, I, I guess I'll tell this. Maybe I shouldn't tell it, but I will. I give decent tips. The reason I give a decent tip because I, I leave tracks and I try to witness to people to get them saved. Uh, and if you go in and uh, uh, you're cheap with a waitress, uh, don't you think she's going to read your tracks or listen to your gospel? Uh, you say, yeah, him and his Jesus, he ain't a cheapskate. Wonder if God's a cheapskate like he is. I, I'm just, I, I, that's why I feel. I had a preacher told me many times when, when, when I first got saved, um, if you're not going to give a person a decent tip in a restaurant, don't even let them know you're a Christian. Don't give them a tract. Uh, don't embarrass yourself in God. I had a preacher tell me that many, many years ago. And so I do, and... and uh, Gregory can attest to this, or Brad. That waitress treated us real nice when we went there, didn't she? And 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 that's the way she. That's why she treats us so nice. When we come in there and sat down, uh, she came to our table like a rocket with a big smile. <laughs> why? Because he that giveth gifts, people love people that give give. Whether it's a waitress or or. Uh, a grandson or a great-grandson or a child or whatever. I like people that give gifts, don't you? <laughs> well, sure you do. Don't say, oh, I don't care. Yes, you do. We like to get stuff, don't we? Yeah. Many will entreat the favor. No, the next one. Uh, uh, and every man is a friend to him that giveth gifts. Verse 7. All the brethren of the poor do hate him. Oh, my God. That's why when you've been on the street and you ain't got nothing, you need money to get home or, 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 or get some rent for your people, uh, your people don't know you anymore. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm going to ask you, but it, I mean, it happens. <laughs> uh, they, sure talk, they sure talking to that son that's making it big. More than that one that's on the street needing yeah. rent. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I tell the Bible's true. Isn't the Bible always true? Yeah. Amen. The Bible's always true. All the brethren of the poor do hate him. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of straight out, flat out, isn't it? <laughs> they say, Psh, ne'er do well. Why don't the bum get a job? I ain't saying him nothing. But then old Charlie, the other <laughs> son over here that living high on the hog and uh, got a condo uh, uh, in, uh, in Daytona Beach, they're going to snuggle up to them, figure they can come down. Uh, uh, and it's like, like, uh, like Sydney Persian. I snuggle up to Sydney. You say, why'd you snuggle up to Sydney? I'm just going to tell you the truth about it now. He, he, Sydney Persian, I like to tell stories. And uh, I got a lot of good stories too. Sid, uh, Sidney's lawyer called me at the mission and said, "Mr. Persian, S Sidney Persian was a slum landlord in Milwaukee, and he owned all the houses across the street from the mission. We we owned the block of property that school I told you I bought. Well, across the street, he owned all the, he owned all the houses on that side of the street. And his lawyer called and said, Mr. Persian." Uh, is is giving you the house on the corner across the street. He's donating it to the mission. I was well. That's wonderful. He's all right at the paperwork, and he says. Besides that, every year uh, he's going to give you a house. 
going to give you a house every year until he gives you the whole street there on alongside of you. I said, fine. Sydney was like in his early 80s. I, I kind of I kind of joke around more than I should, really, but I said to him, I said, you tell Mr. Persian, I'm praying he lives to be 125. <laughs> That's what I told him. <laughs> Why? Because I like a friend to give me a house every year. <laughs> and if it is 80s, I pray. <laughs> Why? Because you want to be a friend, someone got something, amen, so they give it to you. I'm just telling it was me, the preacher. I've done that. Everybody does that, don't we? Don't say, uh, was I, I don't think he bought me because he didn't buy me because I didn't have to do nothing for him to him to give that to me. You know, if, if he would have said, you have to do this for me to do that, that's different. But if he's going to give me, see, a gift is free, ain't no strings attached, amen? Yeah, so we're nice folks that give gifts, Amen. I am and you are. We all are. All, uh, it says, uh, uh, much more uh, do his friends are far from him. All the brethren of the poor do hate him. How much more do his friends go far from him? He pursueth him uh, with words, yet there are no wanting uh, in him. So, uh, uh, as we said in, in the previous uh, verse, Many will entreat the favor of the prince, and every man that has friends uh, have friends that give with gifts. So that's you and I'll do that. All right, we're almost done here. Uh, we ain't getting the whole chapter done, but we're got to finish and quit for church here pretty quick. He that getteth wisdom, listen now. Where do you think you're gonna get wisdom the from the Bible? Now the whole the, the the Bible is a book of wisdom. But uh, where where will you especially get wisdom from in the Bible? Proverbs. Book of Proverbs. That's what we're reading today. It's the 19th day of the month we're reading here. Read it every day. I read Proverbs every day for the day of the month. There's 31 Proverbs, so you got one for every day of the month. Sometimes there's one, one day a year is on 28 days. Every four years is 29. Sometimes it's 30. Generally it's 31. But you got enough Proverbs for every day of the every day of the a month read it every day like we are today uh he that keepeth understanding shall find good and it's time to quit it's uh quarter to 10 we're going to start church at 10 we'll be preaching here for you that want to come back on facebook about 20 20 minutes after god bless you folks uh church folks will start right on time at 10 o'clock billy joel will be playing and we got the uh, uh, good personal uh, music, country music, and then we'll be having church starting at 10 o'clock in 15 minutes beyond time. We'll be starting then. Talk to you later on Facebook.